Hello and welcome gamers to another episode of Video Game Hunting. This is my MGC Midwest Gaming Classic 2018 pickup video. Uh, the Midwest Gaming Classic went to a new center this year. It was at the um, Milwaukee Convention Center in downtown. More space, new venue. Um, it kind of put a whole new light on the show and it was great. I got some footage if you guys want to check it out. Now, in addition to just the new venue, uh, they also did something different this year, which was after parties. They did uh, one official after party, and then two other after parties Saturday night. I went briefly uh, to the official after party and witnessed something just horrific. Uh, the big draw to that one was you got to play, or had a chance to play, the Nintendo PlayStation prototype, one of a kind. Well, you'll see here that this was set up in the room, and uh, some guy, just decided to put his cocktail mere inches from the Nintendo PlayStation Pro Jack. Not like it's a one-off machine that you can't possibly replace or anything. So just <laughs> be aware, don't be that guy. Uh, but on to my pickups. Um, as with all these conventions, I am not there looking for stuff I can find every day. I want the stuff for the systems I can't normally find things for, like Jaguar, 3DO, Turbo Graphics. Jaguar, I saw one game I didn't own this year and it was Rayman, complete in box, and about $200. I didn't pick it up, but somebody did, surprisingly. Um, Turbo Graphics, there was a ton. More Turbo Graphics games than I've ever seen at any convention, ever. Um, it was incredible, but the prices, as you'd expect, were high. So I didn't pick up much of that, so I went for the import route. But anyway, on the way down, <clears throat> we stopped in Madison at a couple stores, so I picked up RC Pro-Am for the Game Boy. And then I also got Fantasy Star Online for the Dreamcast. It was $6.99. It also comes with the Sonic Adventure 2 demo disc. Very cool. And I think this might have been before Madison, but I picked up a boxed Archer joystick for the NES. This is the kind where you slide the NES controller into the bottom of the thing, uh, which is an interesting concept. I like these old boxes, though. Very cool accessory to add to my NES collection. <clears throat> now, for the show, let's get into what I picked up. This is going to be my import stuff first. I picked up one Famicom game. I have this one, and I've always thought the cover looked cool. Didn't know uh, what it was because my copy did not work. Uh, I can't remember the name of this one either. If somebody knows, let me know in the comments. It was cheap. I grabbed it. Um, I also found just two Wonderswan games. I didn't see a whole lot of Wonderswan in general, but I found these two games. They're box complete. I think I got the pair for ten bucks. Um, I believe this is a Gundam game. Not a hundred percent sure. And then a Hunter Cross Hunter. So yeah, they'll look really cool on the shelf, even if they might be too Japanese heavy for me to play. Uh, they'll display nice with my Wonder Swan collection. So then on from there, I did buy some Super Famicom stuff. Boxed things, actually. They were really affordable. There was one vendor who was selling them really cheap. Nothing crazy, of course, but I picked a few up because they'll look nice on the shelf. And then I picked up a few oddball ones just to kind of see what, uh, what they were all about. So we'll go through these really quick. I don't want to waste too much time. I got a ton of stuff. Um, Street Fighter 2. Space Invaders, Wild Tracks, because I really love uh, Stun Race FX 
on the Super Nintendo, and that's the Super Famicom version. I was told that this is Life, the board game. I'm not sure. We'll find out. Uh, what I believe is a pachinko game. And then the last two, I don't know, they might be in the series. They look similar-ish. They're from Hudson. They looked wacky, so I thought I would give them a shot, see if I couldn't uh, get a couple laughs out of it at least. If anybody knows what these are, let me know in the comments below. And then on to the Sega Saturn stuff. So the Sega Saturn stuff that I found was all really dirt cheap. I was trying to find things that I thought I could play uh, without the language barrier being an issue. I picked up one factory sealed game. This was 20 bucks. This was the most I spent. Maybe too much, but I just had to have it. The artwork was crazy. Uh, this is The Horde. And if you're unfamiliar with this one, it's kind of like an action RTS game. And it also has uh, full motion video sequences starring Kirk Cameron. Uh, which are just kind of cringy. So that's the main reason I bought that. Looking forward to having a laugh at that. And then I'll go through these Saturn games that I picked up. Very cheap. I think there's 10 in all. Uh, I paid less than $5 for all of them. We got Virtual Fighter Kids. Virtual On. Puzzle Bobble 2X. Mobile Suit Gundam. Sega Rally. Decathlete. Jibakers? Jibakers? I don't know. I have no idea what this game is. Um, I assume this is Puyo Puyo, but I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments below if you know. Uh, a bowling game, volume two. This is two disc, which seems unnecessary for a bowling game, so I'm kind of curious about this. And then Thor, which I don't know how well I'll be able to play it, not knowing Japanese, but it looks kind of like a uh, Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past sort of game. Looks cool. So I thought I would try it. On to the next pickups. Alright, so moving on. This will be the remainder of what I picked up at the show. And then I'll have some stuff that we picked up on the way back. Uh, starting off, my buddy Rob of Retro Rob and Guys Games and Beer brought this for me. This is basically an Advantage joystick clone that works with the NES Classic and the Wii U. Uh, very cool. He had seen it. He had put it in a pickup video a few months back. And I'd mentioned that, you know, if he sees another one, let me know. Uh, I'll trade for it. And I just kind of forgot all about it, but he showed up with this, which is awesome. Thanks, Rob. And I picked up one Turbo Graphics game. It was five bucks. I've never actually seen this one before. It's not an exciting title. I'm warning you now. It is Jack Nicholas Turbo Golf. Just loose hue card, but it was five bucks. I wasn't gonna leave it there for that price. A couple 3DO games. I think I paid 25, or no, I paid 20 for the pair of these. We've got Return Fire. And Shockwave 2. So very cool. Happy to get a couple decent uh, 3DO games into the collection. Um, next up, so Friday night I went to the VIG thing and as I was walking, we were walking downtown to get something to eat and I ran into the Bad Graphics Gamers uh, out on the street there and I asked them if they had a copy of Turtles in Time because I've been looking for it. Sure enough they did. I told them I would be back in the morning to pick that up on Saturday when the vendor hall opened. And yeah, I grabbed it, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time. Uh, great game. I've just put off getting it for way too long. I just picked it up this time. Had to get it before the prices went even higher on it. Uh, so next up, I picked up one Aladdin Deck Enhancer game. This was Micro Machines. Uh, I think I paid seven, they had it ten. The box wasn't in the best condition, but it was one of the last couple I needed for the set. Now, where it gets interesting is Later on in the show, I found somebody selling the full Aladdin Deck Enhancer set. Uh, it's just new old stock uh, Aladdin Deck Enhancer games if you're not familiar with them. It's like a mini cartridge that slides into another piece of a cartridge. That goes in your NES, but I got a factory sealed Aladdin Deck Enhancer. Um, this is something I've wanted for a long time. And then I of course got the complete game set all unopened. We got Micro Machines, Quattro Adventure. Dizzy, and then the other three games, I believe there's only six in total, plus the card that comes with it that were ever released for this uh, accessory, I guess it is. Quattro Sports, Big Nose Freaks Out, and Linus Spacehead. Uh, yeah, I think I paid $100 for that. They're asking $120. I don't know what the prices are currently online. I know you used to be able to get this new old stock, these full sets, um, probably around like $80. Uh, so. 
I might have overpaid a little bit, but it was just right there and it was something I've always wanted. And then one of my favorite games, sports games on the NES is Blades of Steel. Now, if you don't know, there is a label variant that's got like a red border. This is that label vari variant. I got it box complete, um, manuals in there, hence the complete, I guess. Uh, yeah, it was 20 bucks. I don't know if that's a really good deal. I just don't see this at all, even just loose cartridge. So to get the full box was cool, and it's a game I loved growing up, so even if I overpaid, it was worth it. I picked up one, not homebrew, but I guess it's a port. Um, this is Ghostbusters 2. This is the one that was released outside of the US. It's supposed to be a very, very good Ghostbusters game. This was a limited retro, it's retro limited, uh, release number two, two of eight for MGC. Basically they put in some extra stuff in there, like an extra perler art of Slimer. And it's got a glow-in-the-dark casing on the cartridge. Very cool. I'm excited to play this one. And then because, uh, if you've watched my last couple videos, I've talked about how much I love Stunt Race FX. Uh, and I got the Famicom version. Uh, Andy picked me up this Stunt Racer FX complete in box. So this is going to be awesome. I'm going to put it on the shelf next to um, the Super Famicom version and the Nintendo Power with the cover. So it'll look cool. And then the last thing I picked up as I was walking out... I had missed this vendor, they were right by the entrance, I hadn't stopped the entire weekend, but they had some vinyl from Ship to Shore there, uh, and Ship to Shore does video game vinyl. I picked up a 7 inch of Bayou, or The Adventures of Bayou Billy for the NES, the soundtrack. Uh, so this thing's pretty cool, and I haven't put it in yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Just kind of a neat uh, little piece of gaming history, I don't know, there's, there's just something about video game music on vinyl that I find entertaining. Uh, so let's get on to the last batch of things that I picked up on the way. Okay, so on our drive home, it's about eight hours for us to get back from Milwaukee. We did a little game hunting, we stopped at Eau Claire at a pawn shop, and I got a really good deal. Andy actually uh, with, was with uh, from the podcast, and he got an amazing deal and some awesome stuff too. But I picked up these. I paid, you're gonna, for the four games you're going to see, I paid $32 uh, for everything. So we got a factory sealed copy of Quake 3 Arena for the Dreamcast, Aztec Adventure for the Sega Master System, Spellcaster for the Sega Master System, which looks really interesting, I don't know if I've ever seen this one, and then California Games, again for the Master System, this is the only one that does not have the manual, but it's not a very expensive game anyway, so not a big deal. Uh, so that was a great deal, a nice surprise on the way back, and then uh, Andy traded me or sold me some games I guess um, when we got to his place to drop them off and I got an amazing deal on this some great NES games uh, and then some common ones that I don't have so let's go through this we've got Fist of the North Star Bad News Baseball Superman Mappy Land Master Chu and the Drunkard Who, pretty hard to find. Silkworm, Robocop 2. Uh, actually, in some of these I guess I left in here, I did buy these at MGC. Okay, so I'll get to those at the end. Chubby Cherub, going up in price, so awesome to get that. Star Voyager, The Bard's Tale, and Dirty Harry. Now, I, I guess I missed four games. These are four MGC pickups. Again, didn't buy anything crazy, just some filler stuff. I got Defender of the Crown, Skull and Crossbones, Tengen ver version, um, Peter Pan and the Pirates, and Balloon Fight. So yeah, I added quite a few games to my NES collection, which if you followed me, you know that I love the NES. Uh, Andy, thank you so much for the deal on the games. It was awesome. Um, great weekend at MGC. It always is. It's just awesome to get out there and hang out with friends. That's what it's all about. I mean, the gaming is great as a bonus, but it's just about being out there and getting to see people that you wouldn't get to uh, hang out with otherwise, or maybe only get to meet at the conventions every year. So, great times. As always, thank you for watching.